student choice for this week was to look at getting a little bit more information about he, how we analyze multiband displays. Now I want to prefix this by saying that multiband display and color analysis is really challenging and it's if you don't understand it right away that's okay because it does actually take quite a lot of time and practice to really get your head around how different colors appear and mixing mixing the colors making new colors and displaying some colors as other colors so it is complicated and just take time with it and just continue practicing as it will come to you but to help you with that I've got a couple of little examples so this image that I've put up now is from the image of the week last week. This is the Landsat image of Pretoria and it's a true colour composite which means we've got red displayed as red, green as green and blue as blue. So you should be relatively familiar with looking at this type of image. And what you can see in it is that there's some areas, it's quite difficult to see at this size, but there's some areas that are sort of this greeny colour and that's our vegetation. So if you have a think about the reflectance or spectral signature of vegetation, here's just a little exercise for you to undertake. If you draw on a piece of paper a small graph like what I've got here, so we've got our reflectance value on the y-axis from low, medium and high, and on the x-axis the blue, green, red, near infrared and shortwave infrared bands that represent Landsat. So what I'd like for you to try and do is to just imagine what the vegetation is looking like in the bands that we have displayed there. So it's just the blue, green and red components. And what you should note then is that we've got a very small amount of blue light being reflected. A little bit more but still in the, in the low to medium low range for the green light and low again for red. So as far as the spectral signature is concerned there, you're just considering those three bands. Now if we look at a standard false colour composite, this is where we're displaying near infrared as red, red as green and green as blue. The first thing that you'll be able to tell is the vegetation stands out considerably in this one as that bright red colour. And that's because we know that vegetation reflects a lot of near infrared light due to biomass and internal cellular structure. So what I want you to consider here is how you would draw this component of the spectral signature using just those three bands, near infrared, red and green. But as you've already drawn the blue, green and red in, all you need to do now is to add that additional dot for near infrared, which if you're drawing that on a separate sheet of paper, you'll probably put that in around the, the medium to high range. So now you should have four dots on your graph, one for blue, green, red, and near infrared. And if we look at our third option, this is a standard false color composite, sorry, a, a, a false natural color composite. Okay, so it's called false in the sense that we're using bands other than the visible, visible light which we see, and we call it natural in that the vegetation is still appearing green there. So you'll see the vegetation as a really vibrant green, and that's because it's the near infrared band that's actually going through the green color gun this time. So that false natural color image is made up of the shortwave infrared being displayed as red, the near infrared being displayed as green, and the red light being displayed as blue. So really there what you can see is that vegetation standing out quite strongly it's as you can do also with the, the standard false colour composite where we've got the vegetation as green. So now we've just got the addition of the shortwave infrared band there. So if you can put a dot on your little graph to finish off the vegetation spectral signature and you'll, you actually see that the the amount of shortwave infrared light that is being reflected for vegetation is actually quite low and that's why you don't see a lot of red in this particular colour composite. Now in my image of the week challenges I get you guys to try and guess which band combination that I've used and it will always be one of these three if I'm using Landsat data so I'm not out there to try and trick you guys by coming up with a different funky colour composite so we'll just work with these three. In line with this one of the students last week asked me 
why it was that when they look at the different color combinations, the vegetation always changes color, but the water is always blue. So I'd like to go through a bit of an example to explain why this is the case, and it should also help you to understand the multiband displays. So if we look at the top left there, I've got your, your true color composite. So red being displayed as red, green is green, and blue is blue. Then the second middle one there is near infrared, red and green being displayed as red, green and blue or our, or our standard false color composite and our false natural color composite with the shortwave infrared, near infrared and red. So again, if we go back to our spectral signature curve and down the bottom here we've got wavelength on the x-axis and that reflectance magnitude on the y. So just the same as the previous graph that we've been looking at. Now I've drawn in two example spectral signatures there. The first one is vegetation, so you can see that in the green line here, and the second one is water, just going along the bottom there. Now I've also drawn in lines where those three spec where the three color guns are getting used. So this blue line, green and red. So what you can see here for vegetation for example is that out of blue, green and red options, the green has the highest reflectance value. So vegetation in this particular image will appear green, but because it's actually still quite a low value, it's going to appear dark green because it's not reflecting a lot. Now as far as water is concerned, we have three options, again blue, green or red, and we can consider which of those three options is reflect has the highest amount of reflectance in it. As you can see, it's the blue light that's slightly higher than green and then higher again than red because, it's, because light gets absorbed in the longer wavelengths. So therefore, if we look at the, at the band which has the highest reflectance value, that would also be our blue band there. And that's why we see the, the water as blue in this case. Now if we move to a standard false color composite, again wavelength on the x-axis and our color display bands, as blue, green and red vertically up here. So if we look first of all at our vegetation spectral signature, you can see that the blue band is on this small peak of green, red band is in that absorption trough for chlorophyll, but it's a near infrared band which is being displayed as red which has that really high reflectance value. So as we can see there, that value with the highest reflectance value is the colour that we then see up the top here. So that's why our vegetation is red in this example. Now if we look at the water curve, so again coming down and decreasing in reflectance value as we increase the wavelengths, you can see that the, the colour band associated with wavelength that has the highest reflectance value, this time is in the green light area. That's where, the, where that blue color gun is sitting now and again that's why our water appears blue but this time the value of green reflected light is slightly lower than it was of blue so it's a darker blue that we see in this particular image. In the final example again we've got those same two curves and the same wavelengths but we've just shifted those spectral bands once, the, sorry the color guns once more so our shortwave infrared being displayed as this red line here, near infrared is green, and the red here as blue. So for vegetation, once again, we're looking for that highest peak in the spectral signature and seeing what color gun that's displayed through. So our peak in the spectral signature is in this near infrared region, and that is being displayed with this green, band, this green color gun here. And there's our vegetation as bright green in this image. Now for water, we again want to see where the highest reflectance value is along its spectral curve. And our options are out of red, near infrared and the shortwave infrared. And you can see that the band with the most reflectance there is the red band. And this time as red's getting displayed as blue, we now see the water is blue in this area. But again it's much lower, so it's a dark blue.